All right, so most of you are aware that I run a TikTok account called Shut Up and Cut that teaches people how to improve the quality and speed of their video editing skills. Well, I've been running this TikTok account for about a year and a half now and have been able to help tens of thousands of people tackle the everyday issues of video editing. Seeing this great response, I knew I was onto something big, but I didn't know how big until I started getting tons of inquiries from potential clients, brand deals, and sponsorships in my DMs. This is what reaffirmed to me that in today's world, content is king and video editors are more prevalent and necessary than ever before. And with this fast moving environment that TikTok has created, you need to be able to deliver a high quality product very quickly. The need for video editors is at an all time high. And so I stopped posting on TikTok. Shut Up and Cut disappeared from TikTok for six months. But during that six month hiatus, I started scripting, shooting, and editing over 30 in-depth post-production tutorials, walking you through every step of the video editing process in real time on a professional project. And so I am excited to announce that today I am officially launching Shut Up and Cut, an online post-production blueprint that gives you the exact skills, steps, resources, and education that is absolutely necessary if you want to edit content. The world's attention is moving online and the best online attention getter and keeper is video. Hundreds of thousands of companies, influencers, business moguls, and even professional athletes are producing millions and millions of videos every week, paying people just like you to edit those videos. The opportunity is here. Disclaimer though, video editing is not a get rich quick scheme. It takes a lot of hard work. It has taken me 10 years to get to where I'm at right now. And this includes four years of film school, but the payoff if done correctly can be big. So you need to know your shit. But the problem with that is that a proper post-production education is very difficult to find. Hollywood doesn't share its secrets often because if you knew how the movie was made, the movie magic wouldn't be so magic. So naturally people showed interest in learning this magic. So they created something to teach it to you. It's called film school. For a high five figure price and four years of your time, you can learn what it takes to edit all types of video. And this education is kind of necessary if you wanna play the game, but the price to pay for this education is a lot. Now, if you're someone who has had this conversation with yourself or others, let me just save you some time and tell you what I learned. The best thing a video editor can do for anybody, no matter the situation, is achieve a high quality result in a short amount of time. Film school will teach you how to get high quality results, but that's no longer enough with content creation on the rise. You need to be able to do it quickly, but that's exactly what Shut Up and Cut is gonna show you how to do. The reason you feel like you put in hours of work and get very little done is because you try to cut straight to a final product without understanding the integral parts of your edit. Meanwhile, you can have a full rough cut done in less than an hour. When you edit any other way, you become susceptible to frustration and you also make your system work three times harder than it has to by forcing it to render audio preview files and heavy color adjustments as you edit. You don't wanna do this. Achieving a high quality edit in a short amount of time is not by accident. In order to do this very quickly, you need to have a workflow. A workflow is a series of steps you take on every project from start to finish. If you don't follow a verified workflow, you won't sustain as an editor. And just to prove it to you, when's the last time you put hours into a project, maybe even days, only to find that you've accumulated a total of what, like 10 seconds on the timeline? And with all that time put into your project with very little to show for it, it genuinely makes you feel like you suck at editing, when in reality, you're just taking the wrong steps in the wrong order. That's the result of a poor workflow. So I wanna give you a quick overview of my workflow and what's inside the course and how you can use this to cut any form of content from commercial productions all the way to TikToks. Now, if you look at the top of Adobe Premiere, notice the order the workspaces are in. Have you ever wondered why they're in the order they're in? It's because this is the most optimal way to edit a video. Your system is optimized for a specific workflow. There's a four phase workflow that I believe every editor should walk themselves through regardless of the project they're editing. This process is what Hollywood uses. So I decided to modify this process for online content. Content. What's cool about this workflow is that it adapts to any project you throw at it. TikToks, YouTube, videos, anything. And if done correctly, will allow you to cut that project 10 times faster. And I'm gonna break it down for you right now using, you guessed it, Adobe Premiere. So phase one of this workflow is your assembly cut. One of the first things we do inside the course is we walk through in real time how to effectively and efficiently assemble your footage in a way that sets you up later in the edit. Your assembly is the very first version of your video. At this point, your video is just an idea and needs to be prepped for implementation. The assembly cut analyzes all of the visual and audio material collected on set for each scene and then reorders it in a way to tell the story best. Your assembly is like a sketch of the final product. This is a prep phase. This phase sets you up for success and we do it in three steps. 
First, you sync. You drag and drop all your footage and audio on the timeline in the order that it was shot and sync the audible with the visual. Then you trim. This is the first literal cutting you do on your project. You cut out all of the fat while highlighting the good parts. In the third step, you assemble, meaning you assemble those good parts in an easily accessible structure for implementation. Basically, you just put them in order. These three steps are where you start. This is how you do it. So many people skip this part of the edit mainly because they didn't know it existed. The assembly cut phase is gonna make your life 10 times easier when it comes to editing any video and is the very first phase in my workflow. And after you've gathered your assembly, you move on to phase two, your rough cut. Now, the reason you cut a rough cut is to watch the entire story early to find out if scenes or story points need more work than others. And you kind of start to see these things in your assembly, but they start to take form in your rough cut. You can get a sense of timing, character development, story logic, pacing, rhythm, all of that stuff. Not only do you save time by learning about these things early on, but by finding these things early, you give your brain time to process how you can cut this together. And those ideas start to marry in your brain as you move forward. But to actually forge your rough cut, there's only one step and it literally should take 15 minutes. Using a pancake editing technique, you drag and drop all of the best shots in the order that they show in the script or storyboard. If you don't know what a pancake editing technique is, I break it down in the course, but to talk quickly on it, using two sequences stacked on top of each other inside a premiere, you can drag and drop from one sequence into another. For example, your assembly will be up here and your rough cut will be down here. So you'll drag and drop your favorite takes from your assembly cut into your rough cut in the order that they appear in the script. Once you've drag and dropped every clip in the rough cut sequence, your rough cut is complete. If you don't have a script or storyboard, you should find one or make one for yourself. So moving on after you have your rough cut, phase three is the fine cut. Your fine cut steps away from the entire film as a whole and starts to focus on the details of each and every cut. This is the creative part of editing. This is the art form we all talk about and yearn for as editors. The fine cut is where you begin to strengthen and emphasize the rhythm, pacing, and story points that were identified in the assembly and the rough cut. This is where you can start implementing things like sound design, color, correction, and even inputting music that will aid the narrative development of your cut. This is a time for review and revision, which also means it's an opportunity to increase the quality of your work. Now, there's five steps to your fine cut, okay? The first one is review and lock it. The second one is add music. The third is add sound design. The fourth is add color. And the fifth is you review it again and you lock it again. You want to trim, edit, and try things out. This is when you throw shit at the wall to see if it sticks. You need to see what narrative paths are available and you need to take the path that is going to best suit the needs of your video. There is always one best path for any project. It's your job as the editor to find it. After you feel that you have found the best possible cut that will get you the results you need, you lock your cut. It's called picture lock. This means no more changes to the footage on the timeline. Once locked, you can then start dialing in the music, sound design, and color, because if you edit any music, sound design, or color without a lock, you'll have to move footage around, which is gonna mess up the timing of your music, which will affect the emotion of your story, which requires more editing. It wastes time. No matter how dialed in our workflow is, we will always think something is wrong. So at this point, it's just a matter of increasing your confidence in your work. In order to do that, we review and we lock it again in step five. We are human, we do make mistakes, but we know we do, so we use that to our advantage. So that's why we review and lock it again. Same process, just a second time around. So now it's time for the very last phase of my workflow, and that's phase four, the final cut. The final cut is the cut that you are ready to distribute and publish to the world. This is the cut that the world is gonna judge you for. Not the assembly, not the rough, not the fine, your final. Your video is finally ready to stand alone and be shared with the world to achieve the results it was sent out to do. There's one thing you need to do here, and that is export. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail about the best export settings, mainly because I already did that in the free one hour webinar that is coming out soon, but your export settings will depend on your distribution. If you are distributing to YouTube, the export settings are gonna be a little different than if you were distributing to a movie theater. So it's important important to keep in mind where your project is going. And after you export it, your job as the editor starts again. Time to find a new project. That's my workflow and that's my step-by-step -step process that I follow on every single project I edit. I know it seems daunting, all of these steps, but this is how you can last as an editor. This is how you can go project after project after project with no bumps in the road. The quality of your work is directly tied to the system you use to edit that work. Yes, it's gonna take some creative input on your part, but this workflow was developed to guide your creativity. And like I said, there are millions of videos is being uploaded every single day. There are so many projects and so many people out there who need this type of work so they can start their businesses, share their stories, but a lot of people tell themselves they can't and they let their lack of knowledge get in the way. And that's part of my goal with Shut Up and Cut is to empower as many people as humanly possible to edit the videos that they want the world to 
messy because you know what? In today's day and age, you're one video away from changing your life. And the quicker you get that video out there, the better. But there you have it, folks. That is a quick look at the post-production workflow that I use and what's inside the Shut Up and Cut course. And if I'm honest, it's the same thing Hollywood uses, just a little bit different. If you want to learn more, you can sign up for my free one-hour training where I talk about the entire workflow in even more detail and discuss my 11 secrets of video editing. Don't worry, I'm still going to be posting a lot on TikTok, but I just wanted to take a second to give you guys an update on what I've been up to for the last year and take this time to announce an exciting launch of a course that hopefully helps thousands of you guys cut and edit content for companies, businesses, or even yourself. If you guys have any questions about any of this, feel free to comment here or on the TikToks, and I will see you in the next one.